creatinine too high? Let's talk about what that actually means for your body and what you can do practically, safely, and starting today. Creatinine is a small waste molecule made when your muscles use energy. Healthy kidneys filter it out through tiny structures called glomeruli in tubules and send it into your urine. When your blood test shows rising creatinine, it isn't just a number on a page. It's a signal that filtration may be slowing down. That slowdown can be temporary after dehydration, heavy exercise, or certain medications, or it can reflect ongoing strain from high blood pressure, diabetes, or chronic kidney disease. In the United States, tens of millions of adults live with chronic kidney disease, and most don't realize it because early kidney damage is quiet. Fatigue, ankle swelling, muscle cramps, loss of appetite, itchy skin, higher blood pressure. These can creep in so gradually that they're often written off as just getting older. But your choices, especially what you eat day in and day out, can either add stress to an already burdened filter or take the pressure off so your kidneys can work more gently. Today, we'll walk through a practical approach centered on one very specific food group, nuts and seeds. You'll learn which ones commonly push electrolytes and minerals higher than your kidneys can comfortably handle, and which ones can fit more safely when creatinine is up or kidney function is trending down. We'll cover portion sizes, preparation tips, timing, and the why behind each recommendation so you can personalize this guidance with your clinician or renal dietitian. Let's begin with three popular nuts to limit when creatinine is elevated. The first is cashews. Cashews are often labeled heart healthy and they can be in the right context, but they're also dense in phosphorus and relatively high in protein for a snack food. Phosphorus isn't bad in itself, your bones and cells need it. But when kidney function is impaired, excess phosphorus can accumulate pull calcium out of bone, and contribute to calcification in blood vessels. That mineral burden can also drive secondary hormonal changes that make the kidney's job even harder. If you enjoy cashews, the issue is not a single cashew. It's the handful after handful habit, especially when they're salted or candied. In a renal-friendly pattern, what tends to go wrong is portion size and frequency. A healthy bowl on the coffee table becomes a daily habit that quietly adds up. If your labs show rising phosphorus or your care team is monitoring it closely, cashews are worth moving to the occasional column and replacing with options that are gentler on mineral balance. The second nut to treat with caution is almonds. Almonds bring vitamin E and fiber, but they also pack substantial potassium per typical snack portion. Potassium is essential for nerve and heart function. However, when filtration slows or certain blood pressure medications reduce urinary potassium excretion, levels can climb. High potassium, hyperkalemia, can present with nonspecific symptoms like weakness or tingling, or it can be serious, affecting heart rhythm. If your labs run high normal or elevated for potassium, large almond snacks, almond butter by the spoonful, and frequent almond-based flours and baking can push you over your individualized limit. Again, this is not about demonizing an otherwise nutritious food. It's about aligning your choices with your current lab trends and medication plan. The third to reconsider is chestnuts. Chestnuts differ from most nuts. They're lower in fat and protein and higher in starch. For people with insulin resistance or diabetes, a very common partner to kidney disease, Starchy foods that digest quickly can spike blood glucose and sustained high glucose damages the kidney's delicate capillaries over time. Chestnuts can also contribute dietary oxalate. And for those with a history of calcium oxalate kidney stones, routinely eating high oxalate foods without balancing strategies can raise stone risk. If chestnuts are a seasonal comfort food, think about portion control, pairing with protein and fiber, and choosing them less often while you prioritize kidney-friendlier options the rest of the year. Now let's turn to three choices that tend to work better when creatinine is high, when potassium or phosphorus targets are tight, or when your care plan emphasizes anti-inflammatory eating. First is ground flaxseed. Flaxseed is modest in minerals, rich in soluble and insoluble fiber, 
and supplies a plant omega-3 fatty acid called ALA. The fiber fraction slows glucose absorption, helps with regularity, and can modestly reduce the nitrogenous waste products your kidneys need to clear. The omega-3 component supports a lower inflammation internal environment, which is protective for blood vessels and may help the kidneys microcirculation over time. The practical key with flaxseed is form and dose. Whole seeds mostly pass through intact, grinding them just before use or keeping a small jar of freshly ground seeds in the refrigerator preserves their oils and makes the nutrients available. A typical renal-friendly dose is one to two annual spoons per se, sprinkled over oatmeal, stirred into plain yogurt, blended into a smoothie, or whisked into a spoon of warm water before breakfast. Start low, increase slowly, and drink water with it. Soluble fiber needs fluid to do its job comfortably. Second is macadamia nuts. Macadamias are energy dense, but relatively lower in potassium and phosphorus compared to many nuts. And most of their fat is monounsaturated, the same general pattern emphasized in heart protective diets. For someone trying to keep electrolytes in range while still enjoying a satisfying snack, a small measured portion of raw or dry roasted, unsalted macadamias can be an elegant solution. Because they are rich, timing matters. Many people find they sit better earlier in the day rather than right before bed. Five to seven nuts as a mid-morning or mid-afternoon bridge can help curb cravings without overloading minerals. Read labels carefully. Flavored mixes often add sodium and phosphorus-containing additives. Simplicity, just nuts, is best. Third is walnuts. Walnuts bring AL, A omega-3s, polyphenols, and vitamin E compounds, that support vascular health in a calmer inflammatory profile. While they still contain potassium and phosphorus, their levels are in a range that can fit many individualized renal patterns at modest portions, especially when total daily intake is balanced. Practically, four to five walnut halves after breakfast or with a snack is often enough to capture benefits without gastrointestinal discomfort. If you dislike their slight bitterness, a quick toast in a dry pan or a brief soak followed by drying can soften the flavor. Always discard nuts that taste rancid or look moldy. Let's bring this together into a daily pattern that respects creatinine concerns and supports overall kidney health. Morning hydration sets the tone. Dehydration makes creatinine appear higher and forces the kidneys to concentrate urine. Begin your day with a glass of water, then eat a breakfast that emphasizes fiber and controlled carbohydrates. Plain oatmeal topped with a tablespoon of ground flaxseed and a few chopped walnut halves is a kidney-smart foundation. If you tolerate dairy and your clinician allows it, plain yogurt adds protein without sodium. If dairy isn't part of your plan, consider a low-potassium, low-phosphorus alternative and check labels for additives. At mid-morning, if you need a bridge, reach for five to seven unsalted macadamias rather than a large handful of mixed nuts. At lunch, build a plate with a palm-sized portion of lean protein, a generous serving of non-starchy vegetables that fit your potassium plan, and a moderate portion of whole grains if your blood sugars are well controlled. Avoid salted nut toppings and sauces thickened with phosphate additives. Those additives are absorbed more readily than natural phosphorus in whole foods. In the afternoon, if cravings hit, repeat your measured macadamia portion or choose a high fiber option such as apple slices if your potassium target allows. At dinner, keep sodium in check. Salt retains fluid and raises blood pressure and both strain the kidneys. Season with herbs, acids like lemon and vinegar, garlic and pepper instead of heavy salt blends. If you want something crunchy after dinner, choose a high fiber, low sugar option and save nuts for earlier in the day to avoid reflux or fullness at night. Across the day, drink steadily to thirst unless your clinician has given you a fluid limit. Kidneys like stable, consistent hydration. Portion size deserve a quick, honest review because they make or break the best plans. For nuts and seeds, a portion is much smaller than most packages suggest. Think teaspoons and tablespoons, not cups. Measure once or twice to train your eyes, then portion into small containers. 
Keep nuts unsalted and unglazed. Salted or candied products pull you toward overeating and add sodium or sugars you don't need. When you cook or bake, be cautious with nut flours. Almond flour, for example, concentrates the nutrients and minerals of almonds, so a slice of almond flour loaf can deliver the equivalent of a large handful of almonds without feeling like it. Labels matter. Phosphate additives hide in ingredient lists as terms ending in dash phosphate or phosphoric. They appear in processed meats, some breads, shelf-stable beverages, flavored nut milks, and many fast foods. For someone watching creatinine and phosphorus, these additives are far more absorbable than the phosphorus in whole foods. Choosing minimally processed options and scanning labels quickly becomes second nature and pays dividends at the next lab draw. Medications and medical conditions also shape what's safe for you. Some blood pressure drugs, ASA inhibitors, and ARBS protect the kidneys long-term, but can raise potassium. If you take them, your potassium target may be tighter, and almond-heavy snacks may not fit. If you're on a potassium-lowering binder, your diet may allow more flexibility, but it's still wise to avoid large, concentrated sources. If you take blood thinners like warfarin, discuss flaxseed with your clinician. Fiber and omega-3s can be part of a heart-healthy plan, but your care team should coordinate any changes so they can keep your medication dosing steady. If you have a history of kidney stones, ask whether a low oxalate approach is right for you and how to balance calcium intake with oxalate to reduce absorption in the gut. What about protein? People with kidney disease walk a narrow path. Too little protein can lead to muscle loss and weakness. Too much protein increases nitrogenous waste and filtration workload. Nuts and seeds count toward your protein total, but they're not primary protein in a renal pattern. Think of them as nutrient-dense accents that provide healthy fats and fiber. Anchor your meals with the protein sources your dietitian recommends for your stage of kidney disease. Often modest portions of fish, poultry, or plant proteins adjusted to your labs and layer nuts and seeds thoughtfully rather than liberally. A few practical substitutions make this easier. If your go-to evening snack is a large bowl of mixed nuts, swap it for a small pre-portioned cup of macadamias earlier in the day and a fiber-forward option at night. If you bake with almond flour frequently, rotate an oat flour or a blend your dietitian recommends to keep potassium reasonable. If you love the creaminess of cashews and sauces, try a small amount of silken tofu blended with herbs and lemon as a lower phosphorus alternative. Or use a spoon of tahini diluted with water and lemon if it fits your plan. If chestnuts are a holiday tradition, enjoy a symbolic serving, eat them with a balanced meal, and make the rest of the week kidney-friendly. Let's also acknowledge the role of blood pressure, blood sugar, and sleep because your kidneys don't live in a vacuum. A sodium-aware diet and regular activity help keep pressure in range, and each five to 10 millimeters of mercury improvement reduces stress on the glomeruli. Consistent glucose control prevents microscopic damage, and a few cautions round out this guidance. If your care team has you on a specific potassium or phosphorus prescription, follow that first. Individualized plans always outrank general advice. If you are on dialysis, your targets and allowances differ. Dialysis clears potassium and phosphorus differently than your own kidneys, and your protein needs are higher. Work closely with your dialysis dietitian. If you experience symptoms of high potassium, palpitations, marked weakness, chest discomfort, seek care promptly rather than adjusting your diet on your own. If you're allergic to any nut or seed, do not trial it. And remember that natural does not mean safe in any amount. The dose makes the difference. Let's close with a simple kidney smart template you can start this week. On most days, begin with water, then a breakfast like oats or barley with one tablespoon of freshly ground flax seed and a few walnut halves, sweetened if needed with berries or a touch of cinnamon rather than syrups. Mid-morning if you're hungry, Measure out five to seven unsalted macadamias and enjoy them slowly. 
Build lunches and dinners around vegetables that fit your potassium plan, modest portions of lean protein, intact whole grains if tolerated, and sauces free of phosphate additives and excess salt. Rotate flavors, lemon and parsley one day, roasted garlic and rosemary the next, so eating well doesn't feel like a punishment. Keep cashews, almonds, and chestnuts for rare measured occasions. And if you do include them, make the rest of the day lower in minerals and higher in fiber and hydration. Over time, these steady choices lighten the workload on your kidneys, help stabilize electrolytes, and support the rest of your cardiovascular system. You'll likely notice less swelling, steadier energy, and more comfortable digestion as your labs settle. Your kidneys work quietly every minute of every day. When creatinine sneaks upward, don't panic and don't ignore it. Use that number as a nudge to rebalance what you eat, especially your nuts and seeds, and to check in with your clinician. With portion awareness, label literacy, and a calm, consistent plan, ground flaxseed in the morning, measured macadamias for satisfaction, modest walnuts for vascular support, and fewer bowls of high mineral snack mixes, you give your kidneys the environment they need to keep doing their job for years to come.